Hi right, guys, welcome back to another GGF video review. Today we're doing a quick overview on the relatively new Cooler Master Hyper D92. Uh, this is a medium enthusiast range cooler. It's meant to be slightly better than the Hyper 212. That's been a really popular cooler. So this is sort of not out to replace it because this is a 92mm uh, cooler. It comes with dual 92mm fans. So it is going to be a little bit smaller. So um, fitting this on smaller boards around memory should be a bit uh, easier. So we'll have a look at that later on in the video. Um, we're also going to do a quick sort of um, installing video. I've got a pretty much standard 1150 socket board here. So I'll run through on how you can get this up and going. It's really simple, really easy to do. So we'll, we will run through that. And we've also got our BC little test bench over here, which is what we're going to do some of the performance tests on. So this is running a Intel 3960X uh, processor clocked at uh, 4.5 gig. So this is slightly more BC than our 1150 board over here, mainly due to the uh, CPU is going to put off a bit more heat. So we wanted to sort of stress this cooler a little bit more than what this other board would have done. So we'll go through those, show you the results we got because we do compare it to a Hyper 212 and we'll just see how it goes. So we'll just quickly see what's on the box or in the box and then we'll start fitting it onto our motherboard. All right, so we'll just have a quick look at the specs. Um, so this cooler does support all your major sockets, or pretty much every socket, all your Intels, you can see there, and your AMDs as well. You've got the dimensions there, and the heatsink dimensions. And it's got a four direct contact heat pipes. We'll have a look at that later on. And they are open on the base, so we'll show you that, how the heat pipes run through the base. It's just under 500 grams. The fan dimensions are 92 millimeters, which I said before. The fan speeds are 800 to 2800 RPM, so we'll have a look and see how loud they are. They go up to 54 CFM. Um, that's a hard figure to sort of explain to someone, but we'll put the microphone up to that later on uh, to see how um, noisy that is. Fan air pressure is up to uh, 42 millimeters. Um, let's see, fan life expectancy is 40,000 hours, so being cooler master, these should be really really long lasting which is good and noise level strange how they said the noise level oh cfm yeah sorry cfm is how much air and the noise level is 33 decibels so that's relatively quiet um you probably shouldn't hear that um over the rest of your system noise bearing type is the uh, rifle it's got four pin pwm connector so we'll have a look at that later on 12 volts uh dc and then we have your safety current and rated current is Pretty crazy how they put all that on there. Power consumption is 2.88 watts and the fan weight is 74 grams and the total weight is 636 grams. So they got the weight somewhere else. I saw, so the heatsink weight is 448 and the total weight is 636 grams. So that is a heap of information they put on there. Probably most of it you don't really need to know. Um, and then we just got some extra dimensions there as well if you're really not sure if it's going to fit in your system. But pretty much guarantee you this will fit um, quite easily. Um, so first off we have our accessories box like most coolers, all your brackets and all that. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on. Uh, you've got some foam up the top and now we have our cooler here. So the fans are fitted and then we just got a little bit of foam down the bottom. Alright so the first thing I noticed with these fans, they sort of have this new uh, a new sort of uh, fan clip which I do really like. A lot of these coolers that are out there have the wire brackets. You've got to try and fit in between the fans and, and sort of move them around. But with these, uh, with this new one, with the 292 uh, millimeter fans, you just simply uh, open that up there, that plastic clip. And then on the other side, you just simply do it like that. And then the whole fan assembly just comes off like that. So that's one. And then the other exactly the same. So I do like this heatsink design. It's just not a square. Um, they've done it like that. That's probably the best way to see it. So they've actually extended the heat pipe. So once you actually get the fan on, you actually um, is about the same width. The uh, fan's a little bit wider um, with it on, but once it's off, it's um, just a little bit skinnier. So that's the top there. You can see all the fins there. And you've got your heat pipes, your four heat pipes that run underneath and then you just have this protective one. So it is a sort of a core contact cooler, which they call it. So the heat pipes do run flush with the base. Um, this does come with thermal paste. Uh, it comes in a little box, so we'll just go through that um, a little later on and see how that looks. Um, another thing to mention is the fans come pre-assembled onto these brackets, so you cannot get the airflow mixed up. You can see they're both different. 
one's blowing, this one's blowing down, this one's blowing up. So when you install it onto the cooler, um, you're, not, you're never going to have the two fans uh, sort of forcing each other unless you physically take the fans off these brackets and, uh, and reverse them. Alright, so I'm just going to go everything. We'll do the installation on the 1150 socket. You do get a really nice little uh, quick manual, which is really easy to uh, really easy to read. That's one thing that Coolmaster do well. They do easy to read manuals because not everyone is going to be an expert when installing these. Uh, a lot of people will be beginners. So just a quick rundown. We have the that's your backplate for all your Intel sockets, bar 2011. 2011 is really simple. You just pretty much uh, you need to screw in a few nuts on top of the socket and then you can just drop it on. Um, 2011 has always been easy because it comes with a, a backplate already, um, whereas the other sockets you actually need to use their backplates. So these ones here are your AMD brackets, we don't need them. Um, this is your Intel, like I said. This is your 2011 little standoff. So this goes on the 2011 socket, and then you just simply just put these two bars on top, and then that's it for 2011, which is much easier. So that's why I'm not doing 2011. Um, I want to show you sort of a more complex on where you need to use a, um, a backplate. Uh, so these are all the rest of your Intel uh, screws, and the AMD ones are in there as well. It's really handy how it does actually show you which, which is which. It's like D, E, F, so you will not get lost. Um, there's your Coolmaster thermal paste. This does work fine, but I recommend um, if, if you want to get the best temps, get a, uh, a sort of more performance uh, thermal paste. Um, in our test benchmarks, we're running the IC Diamond uh, 7 carat stuff. That's really good stuff. Um, so that'll probably drop it a few degrees even more. All right, so I'm just going to start off with this, um, installing this now. So we grab our um, Intel backplate here. You notice there's some little notches on here. So these will be for your different socket sizes like this. So it's kind of not picking that up. So I need the middle one. So I need to make sure everyone is in the middle groove because that's the one for 1150. Then you just simply drop this in the back like so. Once that's done, I've actually um, did this before, uh, early so I do know which um, ones to use. Now you do have these little protectors so now these go over each hole like that. That's just to stop you from screwing the uh, when you screw the next component on you don't want to damage the PCB. Uh, so these are just little, um, they're not really rubber, just plastic little uh, protectors so that'll just go on like that and then like that. I'm just going to leave these off for now because that'll take a bit of time to inst install those but they do go on each one of those or oh, one's actually fallen off so they're just um, I might grab that one off if I can. So they're just little plastic, little round things like so. All right, so once you do put those uh, little black uh, plastic protectors on, you screw in four of these. So you got one, that's two, Most of all of this can be done by hand. Three. And then the fourth one. So yeah, the reason for those little black plastic things are just so when you're screwing these in like this, you don't sort of chew up your board. But I'm just doing them soft for now. So the next step is you need to grab these ones here for the 1150. So we have it like that. might be hard to see so that's one side done actually it goes like that and then just the last one so these just simply screw in like this and you can just hand tie it all these. And then your cooler, I'm just going to do this with the fans off for now. It does make it, well you need to do it with the fans off so you can get into these to screw it down. So these comes pre-mounted like this. Some coolers you have to put these little attachments on, but these come already pre-done. So these just line up like so. You might, just, you might just have to loosen it a fraction just to get it to, uh, to line up perfectly. All right, so I just need to grab a screwdriver. 
Actually, we might do it so the Cool Master logo is up the right way. I am actually doing this just without thermal paste for now because I don't really need to open that up for this because the final one will be over on the uh, 2011, 2011 board. So bear in mind you will need to put thermal paste on when installing this. And then you just alternate between each side until it's down nice and firm. One like that, and then that's it. Once that's on nice and tight, you can see that. And that's how it's installed on this socket. And then you can just simply, depending on which way you want your air to flow, um, most cases would want to go from this way. So I'll be putting this one on uh, this way because the fans will always blow um, the direction that the frame is facing. And then I'll put that one on like that so that's pretty much it installed like that and then you can either run both if you want to control these fans separately it's probably best to control them together so they're at the same speed you've got two separate ones or you can use the nice little included bracket um, that they are not the bracket the um, the splitter that'll join the two into the one and then you can put it straight on the board just like that all right so this is checking our uh, memory clearance this is a relatively small board um, we are using the first dim slot here and you can see it's just touching the side uh, like that will work fine um, It won't affect any performance the memory can stay like that So it is a tight squeeze in this board, but it is quite small um, It's probably you're not going to get you could probably get low profile memory to go under it But um, it's not going to be an issue. So we'll just see how it looks like in the uh, 2011 board All right, so we've got the uh, D92 installed on our 2011 system so as you can see there you've got plenty of room in and around the socket there and then on the other side plenty of room there as well so much faster to install on the 2011 not like it was very long to install on the 1150 uh, sockets but it's slightly faster on the 2011 uh, we'll just turn it on now just to check the noise we'll actually just let the GPU calm down a little bit so I've just got this plugged into the two uh, two standard ones on the motherboard there, the four pins. So I have been using this cooler for a bit to do the benchmarks. It's really quiet. Um, it's probably slightly quieter than the two one two. So that is good to uh, good to see. Because first off, when I saw the ninety two millimeter fans, I thought they might be a little bit more noisier, but they're actually quite quiet. Uh, so I'll grab the uh, microphone. Alright, so that's it up really close. Like, I literally am standing about two feet away and I can't really hear the system at all. So, it just goes to show how quiet these uh, these fans are. Like, bear in mind, they're not really doing much uh, load. Being PWM, they will go up slightly more dependent on load. So, uh, it's not doing much now, but they are relatively quiet fans. Now, um, we'll just have a look at the uh, performance of this cooler and then that'll probably be it for the review. Okay, so we'll start off with our Prime 95 test. So straight away, that's going to be our hottest test. Intel stock cooler, pretty much on 2011. Um, I don't even know if there is one. It's pretty much a fail. On the 212 Evo, you got about 78 degrees max. And on the Coolmaster D92, it was about 77. So just a fraction better there. Uh, scrolling down onto Battlefield 4, uh, won't even bother with the Intel stock cooler. The 212 uh, Evo was 69 and the Coolmaster uh, D92 was 67 and the final one was uh, Minecraft so we got about 63 on the 212 and the D92 was 61 so just bear in mind that this uh, CPU cool uh, sorry the CPU in the system is running at 4.5 gig and it had about 1.35 volts on the vehicle so um, there's a lot of watts there to disperse so this cooler did handle it really well Alrighty guys, well that's it for this uh, quick overview on the Coolmaster D92 cooler. 
Um, the price of this cooler is set to be released about the $50, $50, dollars mark, sorry. So it's uh, slightly a little bit more than the Hype on 212, but the performance and the overall size is a little bit smaller. Um, as for installation, installing it was the cinch. Uh, you saw in the 1150 socket installation that it doesn't take long at all. And then on 2011, it's even uh, quicker as well. And then you got the size of the cooler. It'll fit in just about any system you throw it at. It's really good with the height as well. If you have a look at the test system we got, we've got the height here and it's literally not too much higher than a video card. So if you're installing it in media centers or small cases, it's a great option for that as well. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I want to thank Cooler Master for sending out this coolest review and thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos in the future.